So today we're working on takedowns without the penetration step, and we have eight of them. So we're going to dive into the very first one, which is super simple, you've all seen, but it's very important to learn how to get to it, how to do it, and then how to finish it. So it's the snatch single. So I got Levi here, and what we're going to do first with the snatch single is work on the setups. So we're facing this one. What I like to do with the snatch single is nice and easy. I like to get both hands on the inside of his arms. He's gonna tie up on the outside. And from there, I just like to do a pull and get to this leg attack. So just to show you guys, we're here. Now, when I pull for this leg, the leg that I want, I like to go for this right leg. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna not just pull with one arm like this, because my arm is not stronger than his body. I'm gonna use my body and my arm for pulling. So, just to show you what it looks like, I'm here, I'm not going like this. I'm gonna take my feet here, I'm gonna shuffle them away. Not backwards, just away to the left, and then I pull with my arm. Now, notice how that made him step. That's what we want, and then we can attack this leg. By stepping in, reaching with this arm, keeping my head up the whole time, locking both of my hands, and now I just pull this leg up here. Now, I highly recommend if you want to get better at this position, really focus on keeping this back straight, head up, hands locked, and just moving around. Because you'll find a lot of times when you're in a match and you're in this position, you're gonna start getting lazy, your back's gonna round, your head's gonna go down, now you're gonna guillotined. It's no fun. So, work on just getting this, locking, just moving around a little bit. Keep a good position. This also helps your partner here work on their balance for defense. So one more time. I'm here. I'm going to use my feet and my arm to pull the leg that I want. Here, it gets him to step. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to elevate this arm. I'm going to step in with my right foot. And then I'm going to hit him with my head here, keep my head up and my back straight the whole time. So here, lock with both hands, back straight and upright, heads in, walking around. So this is probably my favorite way to get to the snatch single because I find a lot of times when I just pull and just reach, it's harder to keep good head position, but with this way, it's a lot easier to keep the good head position, keep your back straight and all that good stuff. So, what we're gonna do here is still similar thing. We still wanna get this leg forward. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna elevate this arm and we're gonna reach with this hand instead of reaching with this one. So if I turn this way a little bit, I pull, I'm gonna reach with this one, step in, and now look at this. It's kinda of like a high crotch if you guys have ever seen it. I'm getting past this, changing my level, stepping, and reaching to this leg. Now all I do is I bring my other hand to it, and now we're in the same position. So one more time. I pull, elevate, step, reach. And now I bring my other hand down. Other than the one we just did, this is probably my, my other favorite one. So when you go for an underhook in wrestling, you usually don't wanna just go and just throw it like this because this guy's gonna have pretty tight arms here and he doesn't want you getting an underhook. So if I just go like this, <laughs> there's no way I'm getting it. I mean it works. I <laughs> mean <laughs> Maybe it works on you guys. Um, it doesn't work against the guys I competed against. So what we're gonna do is to get this underhook, we're gonna club, and then we're gonna go for the underhook. And the reason why we club is because it gets him off his base, he's off balance, and now he's not thinking about an underhook coming, he's thinking about getting his head back up and getting in a good position. So, I'm here, club, notice how it brings him down. Now as he's coming down, there's space that opens up here. Now I shoot this underhook. Now once I get this underhook, we're gonna turn this way. I like to lock it right here on his shoulder. So if Levi stands up real quick, I like to get it right here and just keep this tight. You don't want to have this thing loose because now you can't do anything with it. And he can just clamp down. So I'm keeping this tight here. So if we go back, I'm here. So now what I'm going to do is, I already, I'm going to 
pull in this way to get this foot forward. Now it's going to be very similar mechanics. I'm going to still step outside, reach in with this arm, and this time I'm going to throw this under him, like that. This gets him off his base, takes him away from his leg, and allows me to get to it without him being in the way. So we're here. I'm going to step in, throw this, reach for the leg, and then walk around with it. One more time. Club, underhook, pull, throw, step in. Here's a clip showing you can get the underhook from other positions, such as shot recovery, so you shoot and catch an underhook, and then we'll slow it down in this next clip so you can really see what I mean. But they all don't have to come from a collar tie. So here I shoot. I go to come up and recover. An easy way is to get an underhook on that right side, keep control, and now I keep him from shooting into my legs. So I lied. This is actually, <laughs> this actually might be my favorite one. This one is super simple, and I actually use, use it all the time, and it's faking. So fakes are, you can use this for any leg attack, really any attack in wrestling, and it's an easy way to get your opponent to bite and think you're actually attacking them and then use their reaction to actually get to your attack. So what do I mean by that? So I'm here. Now let's say I want this snatch single and Levi ties up with me, and I pull and I get this leg forward. Now, if I just go in here willy-nilly, and he's uh, expecting it, there's no way I'm gonna get to it. So I step in, he brings it back, can't get to it. What I can do is I can fake to it. So we're here. As I fake, he's gonna bring his leg back, and then to gain his balance back, he's gonna bring his leg back forward. So I hear a fake. Now as it comes back, I can go. So this is a timing thing. I'm gonna fake, his leg goes back. Now when his leg comes forward, I snatch it. So we're here, I pull, I fake, it comes back, right in. Now this one isn't exactly a snatch single, but watch, the concept holds true, so I fake to a single, then I go right back to it. So you use the fake to set up your attacks, get them off balance, and make it easier to get to the leg. This one looks the best on the highlight reel. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fake, and then he's going to bite, and I'm going to snap him down. So this one isn't exactly the snatch single, but you can use the snatch single fake to go to a snap down. So, nice and easy, we're here. I get his leg forward. All I'm going to do is I'm gonna step and fake. He brings the leg back. Now look at this. All of his weight's forward on his head. His head's looking down, and his body goes where his head wants to go, or where he's looking. So I'm just gonna help him go down. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my hand here, go up to the collar tie, we turn this way. This hand is on his tricep just to help pull him down. And it's already there because we have inside control. And then I'm just going to step back and pull him down. Now, very important, as you pull him down, don't keep like a leg way out here because now he can grab it and take you down. As you pull him down, get your legs back. We're not going to work finishes from the snap down right now, but I just want you guys to keep in mind, you can fake to a snatch single and pull guys down. So one more time. I pull, I lift, he brings it back. Now look, everything's ready to go down, so I just help him. Bring this hand up here, get my inside tie. We'll turn just so, just so you guys can see this, right here. And now I just pull down. Legs are back the whole time. I'm not on my knees. If I go on my knees, I take all the weight off him. Exactly, he can start coming into my legs. I'm here. He should be feeling my weight on his neck, and now I can start working good lines. Here's an example of a fake to a snap down. I hit that leg, he goes down. I don't even have to go to a collar tie, I just pull him down with that underhook I have. Now one thing to note, if you have a deep underhook and someone goes down, they can hold on to your, your tricep there, and basically hold on for dear life. So I don't really like to hang out there much when I get to this front headlock position. I like to just go right on the chin and get that arm out by trying to bounce them to the mat and extracting the arm. 
So we have a few setups that we can use to start getting to the leg. I'm gonna use the nice and simple one to just pull and step in. And now we're gonna work on running the pipe, which is a very simple, easy finish. So we're here, I pull, I step in, I get here. Now that I'm here, you can't just finish the, sing or the single leg by just walking around like this. <laughs> Unless <laughs> Levi's leg is broken and he just collapses down. There's no way I'm finishing it like this. So what I want to do is I want to get him off balance. And an easy way to do that is by running the pipe. So all running the pipe is, is I'm just going to step my foot back this way. I'm going to bring both of my hands to his ankle here. And then my head is going to hit his leg here. And I'm going to look towards his belly button. And it's going to be like a football height. So to put it all together, I step, go to his ankle. Blue 42. So, one more time. Here, step in. We're moving around. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step out here, bring my hands to his ankle, both of them, and I'm gonna bring my head down to his thigh. Here. Now, one key note that I have noticed while teaching this, as I get to this snatch single, you're gonna run into times where you try to run the pipe and they just don't go down. Now it's very important you don't just keep your head down on the thigh because if I run the pipe and just commit to this and can't get it, now he can get his leg back. I'm in a horrible position, he can front head lock me, he can guillotine me. So the second you realize running the pipe doesn't work, bring your head back up. Get back to good position, keep that back straight. So we're here. I run the pipe, can't get him down, can't get him down. We have another option here. So we can use my level to bring myself down to, towards this angle, or this angle here. I'm gonna keep good control of this leg. I'm gonna get this leg out the way, get everything to the outside. Now I'm gonna really change the level down. This arm's gonna uppercut his leg up, and I'm gonna start securing this in my armpit, here. Now it's super important that you get this thing very tight here, especially in jiu-jitsu, because in wrestling it's easier to hold because of shoes, but in jiu-jitsu he's barefoot. So if we're both really sweaty, you can just turn and kick out. Exactly, so we don't want that, so. Here's a clip of me shooting and getting to a single leg, bringing the leg up, stepping out, securing it, and then my opponent goes for broke and I get the takedown. We'll slow it down here in this next clip. So the next clip here, again, I'm shooting. Now when I get to this single leg, I keep my right arm up on his thigh, reach down to his ankle, step out, secure this. Now he tries to roll because he has no other options. And then I get the takedown. We're here. I lower my level, bring the leg up, lock it in my armpit. Now from here, the simplest finish is, uh, I don't really know if we have a name for it in wrestling. I just call it uppercut, uppercut and sweep. So I'll show it from this way. It's a little easier. So I'm gonna take my right arm here. I'm gonna uppercut here. I'm not going like directly under the knee. I like to go a little bit in front of it. So I'm here, I go here. Now when I do this, this raises him up a little bit. It's just what I want because that makes it easier to sweep his foot out from under. So here, I uppercut. And then this right foot, I'm not like kicking him in the leg. I'm just trying to go, I like to go a little bit above the, the heel there. And then I just kick it out. Sometimes you won't kick his foot out, that's okay. Just drive in as you do it. And more likely than not, they'll go down. So here it is, full motion, here. Finish the side control. That was not planned, that was a really good one. <laughs> So one more time, can't get him down here. I'm trying, can't get him down. I'm gonna step outside, gather this right into my armpit. Now I'm gonna take this arm here, uppercut. Then as I uppercut, I go here. Levi's being nice, making it look cool. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my takedown. So another one I really like is 
Five. I will go this way. I go here. Drive up. We get outside here. Now, sometimes you just can't get the finish here. You try to uppercut, you can't get it, it's just tough. So another really simple one to do from here is, I don't wanna say simple, but it's actually one of my favorite ones. We go into this treetop position. So the way to do this is, I'm gonna still use this uppercut hand. I'm gonna uppercut here. I'm gonna take this hand. I'm gonna switch it under here. Now, as I switch it under, I wanna close this gap as quickly as I can so he doesn't kick out. So I go here, and now to close the gap, I lock, or not lock, but I put my hand behind my neck here. Now, if your partner is super flexible, this is still gonna be a fight, but I can tell for Levi, <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if I stand up all the way and start driving, it's gonna be done. So, that's perfect. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here, come up, start just driving into him, walking him down, Take down. One more time. Come up, can't, can't get this. Step out, come up. Now I just can't get this either. It's uppercut, he's up here. I'm gonna go here, dip under, put my hand on my neck here, make this shrink this hole. And now if he's still bouncing with me here, you still have the option of putting your foot behind him, behind his, and then hopping with him as he hops. Take down. Now one more really cool variation of this, and this is how I mostly hit this move, is going to it right away from uh, him defending the dump. Now what we're gonna do differently here is, instead of going to armpit first, we're just gonna skip that. So we're moving around here. Now I'm gonna go from the stump, can't get it. Now, as I go to step out, and I uppercut here, instead of going here, I'm just gonna finish this. Go right to the treetop. Now it's just the same as we were doing. Knee on belly. However you guys want to finish. One more time. Sorry about that. It's okay. <laughs> I'm all stretched out. <laughs> Run the pipe. Step out. Go right to it. Take down. All right, so now the next takedown or finish we have from this position really the last one before we put it all together, is what I like to call the Ayers Club. Uh, Ayers, Chris Ayers was my head coach at Princeton University in college, and he destroyed me with this every other day that I wrestled him. So this is uh, an homage to him. Homage? Homage? Is that um, Homage. Yeah. <laughs> and homage. Sorry, coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, this is what he gets. That's why he wrestled and uh, didn't take it. Exactly. <laughs> I took those classes and I did not do well at them. So. <laughs> uh, so, this time, let's say for some reason I just cannot step to the outside here. This guy is just really tough here, or weird, or unorthodox. And I somehow end up on the inside. So, let's say like he throws his leg outside here. Yep, now what I want to do is I still want to get it up into my armpit here so I can secure the leg. But I now don't have that uppercut and sweep and all that, that cool stuff. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take this arm, this is my club hand, and I'm going to club Levi from the left here. I'm not, gonna, I'm not punching him in the face. It's more of a forearm hit or hit. So it's going to be like that, but on his face. <laughs> and then my right foot here is going to sweep that way. So basically what I'm doing is I'm folding his upper body this way and his lower body that way. So here's what it is. I get this nice and tight in my armpit. I go here, pull up this way. Now very important, keep this leg. If you do not keep this leg and he comes out of this, now I've got nowhere. I have no takedown, especially in jiu-jitsu, and he has all the space in the world to play guard. And as wrestlers, we're not fans of entering the guard. We want to get past that. So. Uh, come back up one more time. So I get here. He throws the leg to the outside. I still get this up in my armpit. Now I'm going to take the left arm here. I'm going to club this way. And then my right foot goes here. So that I can fold his body, bring him to the mat, keep the leg, and then try to get to side control. So I go here. Now from here, I can take this foot here. I like to go two hands on it. Push it out. And then step by it. 
and now there's Neon Bellet, take side control, all sorts of cool stuff from there. Now, last thing we have is just running through the, the full gambit. So you're gonna get guys who block all of the attacks we've gone through, but you can just chain them together to get the takedown. So, an example of that is I'm here. I start trying to get the snuff here, can't get it. He's being tough here. I go to step out, I get this, can't get the sweep. I go tree top, can't get it. He gets his leg back down, go back to the dump, can't get it. Step out. Now I got it. That's Chain Wrestling 101. Never look to do just one takedown or one move. You gotta think three, four, five moves ahead. Against the best guys, that's how you take them down. And sometimes you only get one opportunity, so. Don't get discouraged if you don't get one of these takedowns. Just try to hit the next thing. If that doesn't work, hit the next thing. So this next one is one I learned from uh, my college coach, Joe Dubuque, who's a two-time national champ. Uh, I think I learned this my junior year in college, and this doesn't require a penetration step, and it's a double leg. And what's nice about it is you kind of knock them over with grabbing their legs and by hooking their front foot. Now, I don't recommend this one if you're not really able to do this motion at all, uh, because it can be a little hard on the knee, but at least it's not the dreaded penetration <laughs> step. So, this one is nice and simple. All we need to do is we want to get one of, uh, one of his feet in front, but we want the one that's opposite of our lead leg. So, if I'm here in my stance like this, I want that foot forward. Oh, you're right. There you go. You're right. You're right. So we want this one forward. It's always the opposite to whichever leg you have forward. So, all I'm going to do for this is I get this foot forward. You can just get this forward by like a quick pull or something, and we'll turn this way. So I pull, get this one forward. Now what we're going to do is we're going to step in with this foot. So I step in here. I hook around his leg. And at the same time, I lock my hands around his legs. And I want to go like right under his butt. So quick motion, it's like this. But if we slow it down, we break it down, what we're going to do is I'll turn this way actually, just so you guys can see from behind. I'm here. I step here. Notice how he's going to trip over this because there's this, uh, this anchor down here. Now I'm going to lock my hands here. Right here below his butt. Now I drive. And then start looking for side control, things like that. So one more time. We're here. I pull. I'm going to step, hook around his foot, and go to this double. Now some key things, don't overly rely on this hook. So I see this a lot when guys try this. They just try to go like this, and they like really try to lean into this. If I'm so focused on this and just going down, look, he just stood his ground. Now I'm in huge trouble. <laughs> So, you want to hook this, but really focus on driving. You're still driving like a double leg where you come in like this. It's the same thing, you're just putting your foot in the way. So we're still stepping in, we're bringing a lot of momentum and energy forward, we're tripping him over this, and we're locking around his legs. So one more time, we're here, I got his foot forward, we're here. Now we start passing, get to side control. So next up, we'll work snap downs. So snap downs are just, as they sound, just taking this person and snapping them down to the mat. I mean, this is like the best ROI you can have on takedowns. Anytime you can get someone down, it's usually pretty simple to start getting around them and getting to your jujitsu subs and submissions, all that good stuff. So we're here. The simplest way to do this, as I kind of touched on with the snatch single, is you can pull, get whatever leg you want forward, you can fake. So as I fake, he brings this leg back. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a handle on one of his arms here, and I'm gonna go up to a collar tie. Now all I do is, a lot of his weight is leaning forward, so I'm just gonna help him continue to go forward and down. So I just pull. Get my legs out the way, now we're here. Now, a way you might not be as familiar with to do this, that we've been working a lot here probably the last two, three weeks, is wrist snaps. 
So a wrist snap is, if Levi posted my shoulder here, all I'm doing is I'm taking my hand here, making it like a guillotine, and I just go straight down on his wrist, just like that. This is a great way just to, if someone keeps posting your shoulders and you don't know how to get out of this, it's a great way to just clear and reset. But it's also a great way where if someone's really pushing on you, you can wrist snap and they go right to the ground. So the first one will just be, Levi's just gonna really push on me here. I'm just gonna snap both of his hands. He'll go down and then you can attack the back and all that. So we're here, he's pushing. I go here, he's down, I get my legs back. Now we can start working our go-behinds, all that good stuff. They get pretty tired as well too, right? Yeah, he snaps constantly. So that's a great point Levi brings up because my college coach actually taught me this, also Joe Dubuque. Maybe he should just get paid for this course, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, he taught me this and he used to do it to me all the time. I would get exhausted because I would always be posting on his shoulders and he'd just keep chopping my wrists and then I'd just be trying to find my balance. And by the time I'm here trying to find his body to like get my balance again, he's just in on my legs. Mm -hmm. So it is exhausting and it's great for snap down. So especially later in the match, let's say it's minute four at Grappling Industries, you're both worn out and this guy's just being lazy and just walking forward and posting, snap him right down to the mat. It's so simple. So one more time, he's here, he's walking forward, snap, get my legs back, take the back, finish the match. Here's an example of the wrist snap from a jiu-jitsu match. He's pushing in, he's not on the shoulder, he was actually on a collar tie. You can still do the wrist snap, snap down from there. So we slow it down, he gets inside control. As he starts to push in, I gear up for this wrist snap, right to the wrist there. He loses balance, goes to the mat. Now we're back into a good wrestling position. I could have attacked from there, but I'm just having some fun. You can see we were both laughing a little bit. I'm just feeling this out and enjoying the match. So actually, while teaching this wrist snap, uh, I believe a week and a half ago, we had a guy who started experimenting with it and found a really cool arm drag. So I'll show you guys this because I know arm drags are pretty simple and a lot of people just do them. They're not always the most effective, but I think from the wrist snap it actually can be effective because I watched it be effective in here. So what we're gonna do is Levi's posting over here. I'm gonna wrist snap like we just did, but as I wrist snap, I catch this arm. Now once I catch this arm, I'm gonna pull this down, keep his weight forward. Now I can start circling. You can circle right to the leg, go over to your double leg or snap single if you want. Or, uh, if you post here again, as I wrist snap and I collect this arm, I can just start taking the back. So I'm going to really make sure he's feeling my weight here, catch a hip, circle around, and now we start working our game to bring him down to the mat. So I think this is a really effective way to get to the arm drag because if we're just here and I just do wax on, wax off, Unless this person really knows nothing, it's going to be kind of hard to get it. And you might get the arm, but it's going to be hard to get a takedown. And people, back. people will like spin around. Exactly. Arm drags and be spinning, so having that weight down for a second. Is exactly. Massive. So make him feel your weight with this arm, but I also think the wrist snap helps you catch him by surprise. And then get to a leg or take the back. Now, I do highly recommend going for the legs. Reason is, if he's here, I wrist snap, I go here. If I go here, like Levi said, he can still kind of circle a bit, and I might not get this. But if I wrist snap here, catch the arm, and I go to his legs, now if he circles, look, I can still finish this takedown. So I highly recommend the legs. So there's another snap down from the underhook here that I really like. So if we go back to the underhook that we were doing, the underhook setup for the snatch single, so I club, get this underhook, and I go here. Now, a lot of times when you get this underhook, people like to go here and keep this, this angle here, which we're actually gonna use for our next move. Um, and this is really good, but there's a snap down from here. So you could just from here, if he like turns and circles into you, you can just pull here and go to the snap down. But another thing I like to do, and maybe this is like the standing mother's milk, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the warning. <laughs> what you can do is, instead of going here on this angle, 
you can actually get this collar tie here, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep Levi's head in my chest here. Now, it might look like he can get to my legs here, and he can if I'm being really lazy with this, but I have an underhook, and his head is basically in a cage right now. So I'm keeping all this tight, he can't get to my leg. Now, what's great is if he does try to, I can just switch to a front headlock and just bring him down. I'm just guiding him down with this collar tie. And my hand comes from the underhook just to under his head. So one more time, I get this here. He goes reaching my leg. I just guide him down. He can't actually get to my leg because I have everything tight in here and his head stuck in my chest. So I just help bring him down as he reaches for my leg. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like something's there, but it's... Yeah, it's, it's very deceiving. Yeah. So we're here, one more time. I get here, get this underhook. Just keeping this here. The second I feel his weight come forward, I just pull. So here's an example of the underhook snap down. I get underhook, I go to collar tie, pull him right down. Let's slow it down. So I got him off balance, throw an underhook since he's reaching high. I go to this collar tie here with my left hand, step back, pull him down. Notice my legs are out the way, so he can't grab my legs as I pull him down. So next up, we got the ankle pick. So I love this one. It's a really easy way to catch people off guard. It doesn't require much energy. If you catch their foot and you throw their head right, and uh, it looks really nice on camera. So the ankle pick, uh, nice and easy way to get this is just from that inside control we had. So if I'm here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull whichever foot forward I want. So I want this left one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have one hand on his neck here, so a collar tie. And I actually need to have the same foot forward as his foot. So I'm gonna switch feet. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hand, same side as the legs, I'm gonna to reach towards his ankle, and at the same time, this hand on the collar tie is gonna throw his head away, but not backwards, on an angle. That way he topples over this leg. So I'm here, and at the same time, now this isn't a penetration step, but we are gonna hit our knees. So prepare your knees. So we're here. I go down, reach for his foot, throw his head away. Now remember, in jiu-jitsu, wrestling, whatever, always keep control of this. Start coming back up. Now, we can work to pass. So again, we're in here. I pull, same foot forward as his. Now I take my left hand, or the hand that's on the same side as the legs. I go down, hit my knee, Grab behind his ankle, now I take his head and I throw it away. Grab this, keep control, pass. And we'll show it just from this angle so you guys can see uh, behind Levi. So we're here, I pull, get this leg forward. Now I'm gonna get the same foot forward, go to my knee, grab ankle, throw it away, catch this, pass. Classic ankle pick here, just keeping him guessing with fakes, getting inside control, and I'm looking for his left leg, well, my left, his right, reach down, have collar tie, right to ankle pick. Now this turns into a scramble, that's okay. The goal is just to get to the ankle pick to start. Slowing it down here, I'm using my fakes, keeping this guy guessing, I wrist snap there, he goes down for a second, now I get inside control, We're circling, I'm pulling, not letting this guy gather his thoughts, keeping him off balance, keeping him guessing. Now I take that arm, reach for his ankle once he steps forward, and now I start looking to finish. He's a little scrambly, that's okay. Our goal here is just to get to the ankle pick to start. Uh, we have one more way to hit this, from the underhook actually. So, we collar tie, we get our underhook. Now what I can do is, you can do it from this angle. You can also do it from, from this position that I showed. So what you can do is, same thing, just get this foot forward. Now he's probably not expecting this because he's really trying to just get his head from out of here and trying to reclaim good position. So what I can do is, same thing, I have the same foot forward. I go down to a knee, grab this. Now instead of throwing his head away, I'm throwing this under the away. Now I come up here. Now, a good way to know how to throw the under 
If you're not throwing it right, if you're just staying like this, elongate this arm. If you throw this arm up to the sky, you're throwing it good. So one more time. This time, I'm not going to do it from his head and the chest. I'm just going to do it from here. So we get this foot forward. I go down to my knee, grab his ankle. I'm going to throw this under. See that? My arms get elongated here. Come up. Pass. You can also use the underhook to ankle pick as a fake to get him down. And now look, snap down. I use it like that all the time because the ankle pick's a pretty low risk move. So here's another clip coming up. Go for it. Have a good underhook position still. Snap right down. So next up we got the knee pick. This is very similar to the ankle pick, uh, except we're going to the knee. So. I like to do this knee pick uh, from the underhook. In fact, I think this is where almost everyone does it. So we club, we get our underhook. Now for this knee pick, I really like to do this from having my head here and having this good angle. We're going to need this angle to get to it. It's really hard to get to a knee pick if you're straight in front of them, but it's easy to get to it from here. So I'm here. Now what I'm going to do is we get this, this leg forward. We're going to keep this angle. We're going to reach to this knee here. We're gonna, not sprint, but we're gonna kind of run this down, and then we're gonna elongate this underhook. So here, reach the knee, here. Now as he goes down, look what's here. You can pull this, this arm up, you can go to north-south, if that's what you like, or you can just step around right to an arm bar. So one more time. Get here, get my underhook. I have this good angle, but we need this foot forward. So we pull him. Now that foot's forward, we're gonna reach with this hand to this knee, we're gonna step. Step, reach. Look, it's already gonna, getting him off balance, which is what we want. Step, reach. Extend that underhook. Now we're in side control. This arm's dying to get arm bar. We pull this in, we step around, we lean. We take it. Next up, we got throw bys. So this is when we basically take my opponent's arm, throw it by, and now we have the back. This one is, if you get good at this one, you'll be taking everybody's back. And you'll see a lot of really elite wrestlers and some of the highest, best guys in jiu-jitsu all are really good at this. Um, it's something I've been working a lot in my game and trying to get better at. And it just looks so good and slick. And you definitely got finesse if you can do this. So, Super simple. All this is is I'm going to tie up here with Levi. I'm going to go here. Now I want to get a collar tie. This works really good if we're both collar tied here. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this arm. I'm going to put it in here. Now, if we turn this way, I'm grabbing like right here. I'm grabbing over and on into his tricep. Now the last piece is I'm going to keep everything tight in here with this collar tie. This way. I'm gonna start stepping out to the side here. Now as I step out to the side, you're gonna notice, and I pull my head away, you're gonna notice his arms already start to elongate, and it'll slowly start to come off. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help guide it through with this hand. So I'm here, step out to the side, I'm gonna pivot, face everything this way, start turning my head, this peels the arm off, now I throw it through. Now look, I'm on the back. So again, we tie up here, we both have collar ties. I'm gonna reach in here. Now, you can't be hanging out here for like 30 seconds because he's just gonna know you're up to something. So you gotta be a little quick with it, obviously with reps. But we get in here, step out, start turning, keeping this collar tie tight here. Now I'm gonna use this arm, I'm pointing my elbow up to the ceiling, and I'm gonna throw this arm through. Right there. So one more time, let's see what angle might be best. Maybe if, uh, right here. Yeah. So here, I'm here, I'm taking this arm, reaching in, grabbing this tricep, step out, pivot, turn away, throw this arm through, got the back. Now I also like to do this from, um, or another way to get this is sometimes guys won't really be driving in, they'll just be stagnant. And it can be a little difficult to get this if they're not pushing into you. So a way to get them to start pushing into you is just a quick snap. So over here, 
What I'm going to do is, if he has his collar tied, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give him a little snap down here. Now, a lot of times what guys will do is as you snap them down, they might start moving forward. Now I throw it back. So you can give a quick snap, they pull forward, or push forward, throw this back. One more time. <laughs> that was a <laughs> Right there, that was, that was a good one. So what's also good is if they push in hard and you throw them by, you can just keep that claw, just drag it down to the mat. So uh, the last one I have on this that I learned from another college coach, uh, Chris Ayers, is you can do this from an underhook. So if I get here, I, I wish I had the footage, but I actually hit this on a pretty good guy in college at a, a tournament in the finals. So we're here. I get here. Now, the way you can hit this is if I have this underhook and he starts reaching up and posting on this left shoulder, uh, this other one, there you go. Um, so what you can do is, as he starts circling forward and really putting pressure on this, you can take this hand here, we're going to just hit this elbow, and we're just going to throw this by. So realistically, he'll probably have more of like a, like a collar tie here. So we're here, I have this underhook, all I'm going to do is go here, go under his elbow, I'm going to step out, similar stuff, and I'm just going to throw this through. So one more time, I get this underhook. He's like circling, trying to get out of this. He collar ties in here. Just throw it right there. So it's here. Step. I, I just make it this. I go here. Throw it. That's it. So here's me going for the underhook throw by in a match. I take a horrible high crotch from far away. Leg wasn't forward. Heads down, struggling. But a good way to recover is to go for an underhook here. Right there. Now I stand up. Now if he stays on his knees and he's reaching high, I throw it right by. So let's slow that down and break it down. So again, I'm taking this bad shot. He gets his leg back. I'm driving in. Can't get nothing here. So I decide to ditch the shot attempt, go up to an underhook. There we go. Now back to good position. He stays low. He brings his head, his arm high to my neck. Throw it right by. And all I did was make a fist on that arm, go under it, throw it by, and keep the underhook. So this next one's super simple, uh, but effective, especially if you get good at the timing. So this is just a duck under. So all we're going to do for this duck under is we're going to start with this inside tie. So we're both in here, fighting for position. What I'm going to do is when I'm ready, I'm going to go to a collar tie. Now, for this duck under, what you really have to focus on is this arm on the tricep. So I have this tricep right here, it's in my control. What I'm going to do is I'm going to elevate this arm, kind of like we did with the snatch single, or you do with really any leg attack to help you get under it. We're going to change our level here. We're going to have the same foot forward as this arm. We're going to keep this collar tie nice and tight, elevate the arm, change our level, and now we just bring ourselves around it. So here, right there. Now you're gonna take a step. You're gonna change your level and step at the same time. So it's gonna be like this. That's what's gonna help you get around. So I'm here, we're here. I get this collar tie, I have this control. He brings that left or right foot forward. Now all I'm gonna do is step, raise the arm, change my level, keep this collar tie tight, pull myself around. One more time. We're in here, moving around. He steps there, perfect. Right there. Now, you're probably wondering after a few of these techniques, how you can bring a guy down to the mat when you have the back. So, some simple ones I have, especially after a duck under, is so over here. I get here. Now, you have the very simple one, which is just the mat return. The mat return requires a bit of energy and lifting. Uh, so if you have bad knees, it might not be the best one, but it's still effective. So all I'm going to do is when I have a lock here, I like to go butterfly grip. I don't like gable grip because there's a little too much space here and you can really pu push down my arms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go butterfly. Let's get through all the space and it's moldable. It can adjust to anywhere I'm going. So for this mat return, all I'm going to do is I'm going to step around here. And it's kind of like a shuffle. 
like I, I replace this foot with this one, and then I throw this one over. This helps me generate momentum. Now, I'm not lifting with my arms, I'm lifting with my hips. So I push my hips in to the ceiling, and my arms help just guide me. Right to the mat. So one more. Here, he steps in here. Elevate the arm, step in, jump up. Now we're here, I step around, lift with my hips, guide him down with my arms. Feels like that would work really well because with you coming behind, it feels like I want to kind of like look yep. to where you're going. It's almost like helping me. Helping, well, yeah, helping me posture up and helping you just guide me up. Yeah. Take you on your vision list. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Meet the mat. <laughs> So another one that's really good that people in here have been absolutely loving is rear. I get this stuff under. So we'll turn this way so you guys can see it. What I'm going to do is actually let's turn this. Way. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn my head to this side of its back. I'm going to face the way that my legs are going to go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my hips. So my hips are perpendicular. Now I'm going to drop to this knee, and I'm going to elongate this leg, and Levi is going to trip over it because I'm going to pull him over. So quick motion, it looks like this. Now if we break that down, slow down a little bit. Uh, take it back to here. I'm going to turn my hips, drop to my knee, elongate my leg. Now, uh, if we turn this way, big mistake people in here make is they go like this. They like keep their leg way too tall here, and now if I pull Levi, he steps over it. What you have to do is, at the same time as you pull and go down, elongate the leg. Because the longer my leg's there, the longer he can just adjust and step over it. So it's all going to happen pretty quick. So right when I pull him, I'm bringing my legs down and making him trip over it. So one more time. Got his back. We're here. I'm going to... Turn my hips, go down to my knee, elongate my leg all at the same time, and pull. And then last one from here, so I got his back. Uh, we can just face the camera here. This one's also super simple. You might not always get him down with this, but you might get him off balance, and then you can work into one of these other ones we just did. So I'm here, I'm gonna come around, just like the mat return, and now I'm just gonna plant my foot here. Now, what I can do is I can start putting a ton of weight all on this side, and to do that, I can just wrap around with this left arm, go here, and now I'm going to post my hand out, right to the mat. So it comes back up, I'm here, I step around, now I'm just pulling his weight this way so that he goes over my foot. Here, if you hold on with two hands here, I find you don't get as much of his weight going this way as if you just pull here and, and lean this way. Take it out. Did you have one where the, the hands in front? Or is that like the separate? Hands in front. So oh, like driving hand. hands like down like this going forward? Oh, like so that's more like a, like a spiral ride? Spiral ride. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, I don't do that in standing. Okay. There is one that just reminded me of though. Yeah. So this one's called the broomstick. Uh, I'm still working on this one, but I've seen some NCAA champs in wrestling get this. So you come here and you step around. Maybe I just have short legs, so I struggle with this. But they come here, they extend the leg here. Now they can start bringing their weight that way. I've seen some guys go backwards. It's uh, honestly something I'm still playing with, but it's something that might be good for you guys with long legs. So we'll go here, extend, take down. Or if you've got this guy off balance, maybe just throwing that leg in there, like throwing a, a stick in someone's bike wheel. <laughs> Maybe it kind of has a similar effect, knocks him right over. Yeah. So one more time. Here, step around, broomstick. Yeah. Right now. So next thing we got is the two-on-one. Uh, you also might hear this called the Russian tie, or have seen it on YouTube. So all this is, is if someone collar ties me, so Levi collar ties this side, what I'm gonna do is, I wanna clear this. So an easy way to clear this and start getting to my offense is to first, I'm gonna start turning my head this way. I'm gonna use my shoulder. See, I'm moving my shoulder, it's moving his arm in. This does not feel good for him. So it's gonna be a lot easier for me to peel this off. 
Now as I do this, I'm going to take this hand, I'm going to grab his wrist. Now, this hand starts coming up, right under his tricep. I use my, my head turning and my shoulder to continue to help get this off. Now I catch the arm here. Now from here, I can be heavy on him, and it's harder for him to get his arm up. Now, with this two-on-one, there are a lot of simple ways to start taking, taking the back or getting to attacks. One simple thing you can do is you can just use this, so let's say we're moving around. You can use this two-on-one to push into him. Now, when you push into him, who in their right mind is just going to get shoved all the way out of bounds? Like, maybe we turn this into a meme where I just walk Levi around the entire herd. I've seen funny memes like that. <laughs> He's going to meet me with equal and opposite force, Newton's third law, right? So as he does that, I can do this thing called shoveling snow. So he pushes in, and just like, uh, if we pause here, just like shoveling snow where you go like this. Wisconsin only. <laughs> Sorry, California. Yeah. <laughs> shoveling yeah. snow. Sorry if you don't see snow or you don't know what that is. But what we do with the shovel is we take it, we get under it like this, and then we throw it somewhere. So we're doing the same thing with this two on one. So we're here, I've got this arm, I'm pushing in. Now all I do is I shovel. Down like that, now I take the back. So again, from the start, so we're here, I'm going to start turning my head this way, use my shoulder here. This puts a lot of pressure on his elbow. Now I grab this wrist, come up into this tricep area, now I collect it. Now from here, I can start pushing in. Now, you can push in just like this, or you can get, this is Kimura, right? You can get a Kimura grip on it too, so here, we call it key lock when wrestling, uh, but now that I do jujitsu, Kimura grip. So we're here, you can push in with either one. Now as he starts to meet you, push back in, you just shove it. Right down, take the back. So another thing we worked on earlier in this course is a snatch single. You can do that too, so we're here. Take this off, got my two on one. Pushing in, maybe we're just moving around here. Maybe Levi circles out in front, give me a bunch of different looks. What I can do is, look, right here, his legs right here. Look how close this is. Sorry. No, <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> That's why I said sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for Levi. <laughs> so, we're here, what we're gonna do is, we can just step in and grab the leg. It's okay that this arm is here. So I just step in, his arm is completely stuck. I catch this grip here, and now I just keep my head in. And now we start work, working all the finishes and things we were doing earlier. So one more time, he's here, two on one. We're messing around here, his legs right here, perfect. Step in, snatch single. So he gives me a collar tie again, two on one this. Now there's this thing called the mule kick, but I also think it's, it's called the uchimata, which I also learned uh, was the name after coming to Jiu Jitsu because of these Japanese names. So over here, all I'm going to do for this mule kick is I'm going to shuffle. So I'm going to take this foot, step in, and now replace it with that left foot. Now I turn my hips this way. I'm going to take this right foot. Now I'm going to elevate his leg. How do I do that? I'm not like kicking him in the leg. I'm using the back of my thighs and my hamstring, and I'm meeting his quad here. Now, sometimes you'll get guys so off balance with this that you could just start guiding them down, taking the back. But I find oftentimes that's not the case in here. We have people with really good balance in here. So we're here, peel this off. I step in, I mule kick. Now, what I'm going to do is I like to take this foot and put it across this foot. So now, if I start bringing my pressure that way, he's going to fall right over my foot. Now you can catch an ankle and take side control. So I'll show you the full sequence with catching an ankle. So we're here. I peel this off. I got my two on one. I'm going to shuffle in here. Kick this out. Now, as I bring my, my weight that way and I put it behind this foot, I'm going to catch the ankle. Pass. One more time just to show one more note on that. So we're here. Step in, kick, I go here. Now, it's not just about moving my body that way. I'm also using this arm to start, and this elbow, to push into him as well. So push in, catch here. 
Now I've seen some, uh, I saw an opinion recently uh, by a judo guy, I can't remember who it was, uh, where he said he doesn't, he thinks it's a little extraneous to do that angle pick from there, which I can agree with, there are definitely easier ways to get an angle pick as we reviewed in the course, but sometimes if you're in the heat of the moment and you'll kick someone, it's one of the only things really there to really secure the takedown. So I've been using it in here a lot and I've used it in wrestling and uh, it's been effective. So it's just something to throw in there, be creative with, have fun with. I would say if I'm more connected with you, like a, an underhook or something like that, you could just kick me and toss me over. But yeah. it feels like with this one, like it just sets me up for my free hand to, like there's, I shouldn't say not as much power of a hip turn, but like it feels like I'd more likely to post out with the hand or go forward than just finish it up with two. Yeah, and Levi brings up a good point there too. If someone's got an underhook on you, you can do this stuff from an overhook position. So from this overhook, and again, I'm not a judo guy, but there's a lot of overlap with judo and wrestling. So if you want to see judo stuff, I know uh, J-Flow Judo or J-Flow Academy, he has really great stuff that shows judo and wrestling for Nogi, which is great, and I've been learning from him. But this is just kind of stuff I picked up in my wrestling career, So and it's been effective. So all I'm gonna do here is same thing, shuffle in, Go here. Now, if I don't get him right to the mat with this, now I can start posting behind, throwing down, catching foot, go around. So, speaking of judo, uh, there are a few things I've been playing around with since I've seen some of uh, J Flow Judo's Academy. Uh, I think that's what it's, J Flow's Academy, something like that. Uh, since I've been seeing that stuff, I think it's really awesome what they're doing for Nogi and how they're combining judo with wrestling. And I mean, their YouTube numbers and all that sort of stuff does not lie. Like, people like it a lot and it's very effective. So some of the things I've been playing with, and actually this first one, I actually used to do in wrestling, and I hit this on some really good guys uh, in my college career, just because I, I had a good feeling that it would work, and it did. And uh, I have some footage of that, so I'll share that in this course as well. But if you're in this inside tie, a lot of times, even if you can't get to a leg and this guy is like really good about getting it back, you can catch them off guard by using your feet. And what's awesome about jiu-jitsu is you start to really learn how to use, like, not just your hands, but you learn how to use your feet as well. I think in wrestling, a lot of times, since we have shoes on especially, we're just so used to, like, using shoes for grip, and then everything's about getting to legs and holds and grabs and bringing things up. But we don't use our feet enough, in my opinion. So, this is what I would do sometimes. If I couldn't get to something, and this guy's just really good about keeping things back, if I got their foot forward, sometimes all I would do is just take my foot, sweep it this way, and drive into them a little bit. Here. Now look. Right to a single leg. It's that simple. I hit this on some really good guys. So we're here. So all I'm doing is stepping around, sweeping the foot up, catching it. And it's really important you drive in with it. Uh, into their body, because if you don't drive in, nothing's moving them back to bring their foot up. So one more time. I pull, I get his leg forward, or he just happens to step there. So we're here wrestling, his foot uh, shows up here. I go here, I sweep this up. As I'm driving in it, now I catch the single leg. And now look, uppercut, sweep, all that good stuff. Here's the foot sweep to a single in a match against a highly ranked opponent. And here it is, slow-mo. So I bring my right foot in, and I replace my left foot with it. Then I kick his leg up with that left foot right to a single. Now he tries to start escaping. I follow and then try to finish. And then the other thing I've been playing with is this, uh, it's kind of a similar thing, except instead of the foot sweep on the outside, going inside. And you can do an ankle pick from there too. Now, I'm not good at this one yet, but it's something for you guys to consider and check out. So, we're here. Similar thing. He's got, let's say he's got this foot forward. So, it's similar to this, except it's going to be this one forward. So, if I bring this foot forward, all I'm going to do is I'm going to step in, go this way. And now I can catch an angle pick, or you can just bring it up into a single leg as well. So, it probably looks better a little quicker. So, we're here. I get this foot forward, I'm just going to step in, sweep this up, catch this, uh, this foot. So you really got to kind of push him that way, similar to an ankle pick, whereas with an ankle pick, we, we lean him that way towards that leg. I've noticed if you lean him this way, 
and then you, you go for that sweep, it works a lot better. So here, I lean this way, here, catch this foot. Or if you get really good at it, you could just ankle pick it. So those are things I've been playing around with. Just start messing around with your feet. You're not like kicking the shit out of your, <laughs> your friend's uh, you know, shins or anything here. You're just lifting with it. So I like to really use this part of my foot here and kind of get under it, lift their foot up and then secure it. And to help lift them up, you have to get them off their base, so you have to push them back a little bit. That way, the foot just naturally comes up. And a lot of it's like timing with steps, too. So I've seen a lot of the judo guys, it's like, really get practice of just moving around the floor and timing with steps so the feet aren't heavy on the floor, too. So I'm sure if you're focusing on the collection and the sweeps, like, you're gonna have to dance with the collection a little yeah. bit, and then once you get that comfortable, then you can drive off as well, too. Yeah, that's a great point, and that's why, too, I think a lot of times uh, when, we, when we started this course with was entering the snatch single. So, like, you know, setups, inside tie, underhook, all that stuff, I highly recommend, and this is what we've actually been doing in here, is the first five to ten minutes of wrestling class, we just have guys hand fighting. It's not 100% live, it's just a give and take. It's like, okay, when I pull him this way, how does he react? Okay, his foot's there. Now you start to notice and... Uh, see these patterns, like, hey, every time I pull here, his foot's there, what if I throw my foot in there? Oh, his foot comes up when I throw my foot in there. Now you, you can think about how you can secure that, and now start getting to our uppercut sweep and all that good stuff. So, I think a lot of it really just comes to spending time in this hand fight. There are also really good judo drills. Again, J-Flow Academy, I might as well be an affiliate at this point. Uh, he works a lot of that stuff. I haven't seen a ton of it yet, but if you're interested in that, go check that out.